Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, if you do enjoy the video that you came here to watch, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that little red subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. It really does help my audience grow. It really does help this channel grow. It means more than you realize. So go ahead, hit that little red button. Also remember, full episodes of the Aaron Torres podcast, wherever you download your podcast, Apple, Spotify, et cetera. Now, here is the video that you came here for. All right, everybody. I'm back. Good to be back. Good to be back. I do want to switch gears. Want to stick with football, but kind of want to transition to some off the field news that was really interesting that popped on Monday. And so one thing about this show, we generally don't talk individual recruits in football. Now we do it in basketball because basketball players that are really good can have an immediate impact in year one in college basketball. College football is a little bit different. There's so many guys. And a lot of the times, even the best players don't see the field till year two or year three. So we really don't talk a ton of recruiting unless there's a piece of news that speaks to something bigger. This program's on the rise. This program's on the fall. Uh, Obviously, Jackson State was a story at this time last year or really December of last year. But there was a piece of news that kind of fits into that category that speaks to something more than just a piece of recruiting news. And it happened on Monday and involved a player named Anthony Hill, the number one linebacker in America who was committed to Texas A&M. Texas A&M, of course, struggling on the field, but off the field last year signed that historic number one recruiting class. This year in 2023, we expect the class to be much smaller. That's what happens when you sign 30 plus players. But Anthony Hill was one of the headliners of that Texas A&M 2023 recruiting class. Again, the number one ranked linebacker in all of high school football. Notice how I use the word was, though, because on Monday, Anthony Hill Jr. announced that he is decommitting from Texas A&M and reopening his college recruitment. He has already scheduled a visit to Texas. This was a guy that was recruited by Alabama, USC, Oklahoma prior to his commitment. So really good player, already setting up more visits. And I guess his father or somebody has said that he does not plan on seriously considering Texas A&M going forward. So this is a big piece of news on the field, big piece of news in recruiting. But I also do think it speaks to something much, much, much bigger. And that's this. Is this the first domino effect? Is this the first thing that we see of potentially many Fallouts that happened because of the disappointing effort on the field for Texas A&M this year. Hate to say it, Aggies fans, but I think it might be. Now, in terms of the player, again, don't claim to be a recruiting expert. Not my area of expertise. You want great recruiting info. Uh, You could go a lot of places. I don't know that the Aaron Torres pod, if you want breakdowns of cornerbacks and linebackers and interior offensive linemen, I don't know that, that, that this is the place to come. At the same time, though, you flip on that tape, it's pretty obvious his talent. And when you're talking about a consensus five-star player, everybody has ranked uh, as the number one ranked linebacker in the country. Again, offers from Alabama, USC, Oklahoma, Texas. This com- this decommitment for Texas A&M obviously hurts, right? Beyond that, and I hate to say it, I think it especially hurts more for reasons that, that we don't even think about. Specifically, the fact that as good as that recruiting class was last year, this kid at this position, Anthony Hill linebacker, was a player that Texas A&M really needs. I mean, Texas A&M has a lot of problems right now, but I would argue the number one spot that they need to get figured out is probably in the run game or in the in run defense where they currently have the 123rd ranked rush defense nationally last in the SEC. Yes, that is correct. The run defense this year is worse than Auburn, worse than Vanderbilt, worse than anybody in the SEC. And so that is why this decommitment hurts so much on paper. What I also think, where I think it hurts more though, is kind of in the existential big picture part of this conversation, which is what are the next four, five, six months, and really four, five, six weeks more specifically maybe, look like for Texas a and Because we all know about that elite 2022 recruiting class, not only the number one ranked class last year, but the number one ranked class in the history of high school football. We all know they came in. A ton of those guys are playing. But we do wonder, with all the losses, as the losses continue to pile up in the one-time transfer world, are some of those guys going to consider leaving? That, to me, is the big picture question. We we, we could talk about wins and losses on the field all day, and we've talked about plenty of them with Texas A&M. But I think the bigger question is, 
What are the effects in the locker room? What are the effects in recruiting? What are the effects off the field? And how does it impact this incredible volume of talent that Texas A&M has accumulated over the last couple of years? Because that is going to be the interesting thing going forward. We talked about it two or three weeks ago on this show. At this point for Texas A&M, for Jimbo Fisher, it's no longer about trying to salvage anything in 2022. It's simply about doing enough on the field to convince most of these highly rated five-star freshmen that they want to come back for Texas A&M for another year. Now I would say two things to that. One, you're always going to lose kids in the portal era. That's just part of the deal. Doesn't matter if you're Alabama, USC, Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, whoever, you're going to lose players. And two, I am a little bit more optimistic as to why I think they will keep these guys and at least some of them and maybe more than people think, which I'll explain in a minute. But I do think this is the story to monitor at Texas A&M. And the reason why is pretty straightforward. Take out all of the NIL accusations of what you think you heard. That has, I, I couldn't care less about that stuff. What I care about is this. When you recruit high level players, that generally means that they're pretty much high achieving in most areas of life, right? You don't get to be a five-star can't miss player if you don't have a great work ethic, if you don't compete at the highest level. And so that's my concern. Most of these guys came to Texas A&M being sold on the promise that they're going to compete with Alabama. They're going to be the team that topples Alabama. They're coming to take Alabama's crown in the SEC West. Well, forget the fact that LSU may have done it in half a second under Brian Kelly, but more importantly, when you come to A&M with these visions that we're going to take down Bama eventually, and you're losing to App State, you're losing to South Carolina. No disrespect to South Carolina. I know they just clinched a bowl bid, but Texas A&M is not supposed to lose to South Carolina. You're losing the way that you're losing, which I think is equally important. O offense cannot move the ball. Defense cannot get stops. It's ugly on both sides of the ball. That becomes the thing for Jimbo Fisher. Again, you're going to lose guys. It is going to happen. It is impossible. You're no one in the modern era if you sign 24, 25, 26, 28, 30, 31 guys, remember, you can go over that 25 uh, scholarship limit now. They've changed the rules. You're never going to bat 100 and keep all of them in your program after one year. But the thing now for Jimbo Fisher is to make sure that he keeps the vast majority of them. Um, but this Anthony Hill sign is not a good sign that there won't be some ripple effects from everything that has happened on the field this year. Now, I will say, and I bring this up, because I know it's very easy for everyone to be very anti-Texas A&M right now. But what I will say is I do think there is actually a good chance that they retain a bigger portion of this freshman class than most people expect. And let me explain why. And I know what I, anytime you say anything nice about Texas A&M, oh my God, Torres is a homer. Torres loves Texas A&M. Nope. I'm not a homer. I'm not a Texas A&M fan. Whatever. I just try to be fair in all areas. And I do think there are a few reasons that I believe that AM will be able, the guys that are on campus, and I can't speak to the kids that are committed there. It's a smaller class in 2023, but in terms of the guys that are on campus, I do feel pretty good that Jimbo Fisher will be able to keep a fair amount of them, or at least more than people expect for a few reasons. One, it's because they're all playing. Like Jimbo Fisher talked about it a few days ago. He said, you know, you guys see losses on the field and we're frustrated. It's also a great recruiting pitch. Hey, come here and you can play. And part of the reason that Texas A&M is struggling, they are so beat up with injuries. They are so worn down. And I know, oh my God, if I say anything that defends Jimbo Fisher, that means I love Texas A&M. No, but they're down to their third string quarterback, three starting offensive linemen out for the year. You could go on and on and on and on and on. But I bring it up because I am blown away when I turn on Texas A&M on Saturdays, how many of those guys in that 2022 recruiting class are on the field right now? Again, don't claim to be a recruiting expert, but I got to know the names during the cycle last year when Texas A&M was making history, and they're basically all seeing the field right now. Evan Stewart, top wide receiver in the 2022 recruiting class. Well, guess who Texas A&M's uh, top wide receiver, or at least the number two wide receiver is right now? Leads the team in catches, leads the team in yards, two total touchdown catches this year. He's their best wide receiver. You know, him and Moose Muhammad are 1-1-A, whatever, doesn't matter. He leads the team in receptions. Le'Veon Moss, a running back in last year's class, is getting big time uh, carries, especially the last couple weeks. Um, 
on the defensive front, Shamar Stewart, Walter Nolan, these are five-star names that people got to know. Anthony Lucas, Anai White. All these guys are playing every time I turn out a game, more and more of them are on the field. Defensive backfield, Smoke Bowie, uh, J- Jacoby Matthews. The kid Jared Kerr had an incredible game on Saturday. He was one of the lowest ranked true freshmen in this class. He's even playing and playing well, I might add. And so I bring it up because one, if you're looking for optimism as an AM fan today, a lot of these kids are playing and it makes it harder to transfer. The number one reason you transfer after your freshman year, you're probably homesick and you're not playing. Well, all these guys are playing, so that's a good sign. Two, I think it's important to note, we'll find out probably this weekend and at least over the last three games of the season. I do think AM has their quarterback, though, in Connor Wegman, okay? And it's tough to know because he played well in that one game against Ole Miss. Then he does not play. Uh, then, unfortunately, he did not play because of uh, because of the flu last weekend. But I think he's the answer. And if you have the quarterback and if you can sell that in the future, then I do think that makes other guys want to come back. If they believe that that galvanizing force, that the quarterback, that that most important position is set, I think it makes it more likely that a lot of these guys stay. And finally, I'll say this. Shout out to your boy Torres, okay? So what what I want to talk about now, on Saturday during the A&M Florida game, I sent out a tweet that, you know, I didn't really think anything of it when I sent it out, but I sent it out and it got crazy viral response. And it was just a positive thing about Texas A&M. Didn't say it to support Jimbo Fisher. Didn't they say it to support A&M? But what I tweeted was this. This was during the Florida game, early in the game, before anything had happened. I turn on the game, 11 a.m. kick, and there's every seat is taken. So here's what I tweeted out the other day. I said, I know everyone wants to crap on all things Texas A&M. This is my tweet now. But having 100,000 people in their seats for an 11 a.m. kickoff against a bad Florida team in the middle of this season? Well, it might be a sign why, and I know it's going to sound crazy, good players want to play at Texas A&M. And so this tweet kind of went viral. A&M fans loved it. Everybody else made fun of it. Surprise, surprise. But what was interesting to me, and maybe it means nothing, maybe it means something. You know who saw that tweet? A lot of Texas A&M players. You know who liked the tweet or shared the tweet or retweeted the tweet? A lot of Texas A&M players. And so if you're looking for a positive sign, I think a lot of these young guys are trying to block out the noise. I saw Evan Stewart, that star wide receiver. I tweeted it. He shared it. He said FR, which I think means for real. I hope it means for real. Otherwise, I'm going to look like an idiot. But other guys shared it. Other guys liked it. Other guys tweeted it. And so I bring it up to say, I do think the guys in that locker room are trying to push out the negativity. Bad day because of Anthony Hill. But what is interesting about Texas A&M? It really does come down to what happens with this team over the next five, six weeks. If you're Jimbo Fisher, the number one recruiting priority, it's not some, you know, linebacker or running back or quarterback in the class of 2023. It's not getting ahead on 2024. It is keeping the guys in that locker room on your roster because there is a lot of talent in that locker room, a lot of young talent, but you can't lose it to the portal.